quick warning before we get started. This video may be triggering for anyone with children or anyone who's had any traumatic experiences around sexual assault. I want to warn you beforehand that is described in this video. So if that is something that is triggering for you, I recommend you skip this video and watch the next one. This one, St. George's Castle. As I told you, the one known as called the Mina Castle is 538 years. It is the oldest and also the largest castle in the world in terms of trans-Atlantic century. Boom! What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. And if you want to get the history of enslaved Africans and the slave castles here in Ghana, then this is the video for you. Today we're going to go see the St. George Slave Castle. It's really powerful to really understand what it was like for the people who were enslaved Africans to have to spend time in this castle and eventually be shipped off to America. So you'll get a chance to see what it was like to be them and hear all the stories about the slave castles and the history of these places so that you can know more about what happened here in Ghana. All right, guys, we're at St. George's Castle in Amina and Cape Coast. We're about to walk through and take a look at it right now. Um, there were 70 slave castles across West Africa, and 40 of them are here in Ghana. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon, brother. Good afternoon. Yes. Good afternoon. Yeah. And you're welcome to St. George's Castle. My name is Nana Wachi Iyadu. So Nana is going to be a site guide in the Mina Castle. But it was built in 1482 by the Portuguese. This one, St. George's Castle, as I told you, who are known as called the Mina Castle, is 538 years. It is the oldest and also the largest castle in the world in terms of trans-Atlantic century. 100 human beings were kept in such dungeon waiting for six to have been taken away. Eat, sleep, use the bathroom, all in this dungeon. They actually put empty containers at the corners for them to defecate and also to knit in them. They slept on the floor. Did the slaves try to escape from here? Yes. Yeah? So made an attempt to escape. So uh, according to this, nobody succeeded. But the leaders were killed. The leaders of the, the escape. The of the freedom fighters mm. were recaptured from their dungeons and they put them in another dungeon and left to die. Or in another dungeon. One of the things they say you see, this, this is the largest dungeon. Yes, 150 men were kept here. But in, 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 in any situation where they got a lot of people, 150 were put here. In all the dungeons here, a maximum or about 400 women were kept here. Already, this is the original film. Seeing it clear and neat today doesn't mean that they, they had it neat and also uh, clear like this. No, it wasn't so for them because the floors were covered with so many things that you and I can think of. You see, any continents were put at the corners for them to defecate in there. And also to be neat. In the dungeon, the captives were fed by something enough to sustain them from dying. Definitely, there were some food particles or small, small food falling on the floor. Aside that, sleeping on the floor for any number of days, weeks, or months, that they needed to wait for the ship. Now, as women, 
they also menstruate. Yeah, they also went to the agriculture side. This means it is possible that some of them might have menstruated for two times before being transported. Doing it here, doing it not only here, doing it in the dungeon. They will not give them anything to clean themselves when they make their rinses. Vomit, urine, feces, and some other things. Pack and kit on the floor. It is at the same time they have to put sand on certain things. They have to spread sand on the floor. Find the lies poop or put in or wash it in. They also wait for sand to come. Yes, the female captives were raped by the Europeans. According to history, at any given time, the governor wanted to satisfy his last. The governor came and stood at that very balcony. Some of the women were made to come out from their dungeons. Just for the governor to make a choice of whoever he wanted to rape. Yes, it was a rape. After making his choice on that report, the rest were made to go out, go inside police, and they took the soldiers to water from here for the selected captive to bath, simply because it's quite happened that she was a hermesis. And again, she might have been in the dungeon for some days or weeks without washing them. But while they were in the dungeon, there was no wash for them. Even when they were in the hermesis, there was nothing like that for them. Yeah. The soldiers to work from here for the selected captive to bath, and then take him from here to go to the governor's office. Yes, he was taken from here to go to the governor's office. You know, after the raid, they brought her back to join her friends. So, something like this here, talking about this cannonball, you know, eight of such were here back in the days. And the Europeans had chains and also padlocks fitted on them. Now, the women who refused to be raped were brought here. They tied those chains to their ankles and they left them here. Here, they were not given food and so they were not given water. Also, whether rain or shining, they were here. That was a pants they simply to put here in their beds. You see, some of the female captives were raped openly to break their spirits down. Talk about the difficult female captives. Now, when the ships are come for the captives to be transported, the male captives were also made to come up from their dungeons. They chained all of them. They were taken from here to go to the room of no church. Please come with me. One step down. Room of no return. You know, we came through, but the captives were in chains. No, as you said, they, they the Europeans changed them before they brought them here. This became what you call gate of no return. So this was the final gate or final exit. They said, believe that this was where the captives cried a lot. Because they realized that coming back was far from imagination. You know, this cell uh, was for the European soldiers. Especially the Dutch soldiers who got themselves drunk. The Dutch soldiers who went to the town without seeking permission from the authorities. The soldiers who went contrary to the rules and regulations here were punished. They were European soldiers, please. They put there for some few hours and they were allowed to go out. They provided windows for air and light. The idea was not to kill them. They simply wanted to discourage said crowd. So this was a punishment thing. But look at this one.
this was the condemned cell. Condemned cell for the Africans. Yes, there was a question when we started to draw that the sun people <laughs> try to escape. Yeah. Yes, this was the point. Where the leaders of the freedom fighters were left to die. Mm. They put them here. I have closed the door, but they locked the door and left them here to die. No, no one food. entered. No food, no food, no one. They were starved. Imagine being in this dungeon for three, four days, what will happen? Imagine sitting here looking at your brother dying. Imagine sitting beside your brother, beside your dead brother, waiting for your time to die. That is what happened in this dungeon. That is how some of our ancestors went through the kind of emotional torture that they went through before they died. May those who died rest in peace. May those who attempt to find their roots. May humanity never again perpetrate such injustice against humanity. The last line reads, we the living vow to uphold this. And I strongly believe that we can better uphold this. As we are going out, wherever we find ourselves, if we see it happening in any shape or any form, I think we will be the first people to call others to come so that any little thing we can do, we will do to stop it. And I think by so doing, evil of such nature will never ever happen in any shape, and also in any form, ever again on this planet. Yet. This reminds me of what Martin Luther King Jr. once said Injustice anywhere. It's a threat. My name is Nana Wache Yadu. Please good afternoon. And here is the truth. subscribe button, hit that notification bell, like, comment, and share it with your friends. All right, see you on the next video.